What is up down and sideways, you fantastic individuals? It is Lee Gunlock, Eric and Mark here with the beauties for a little bit of what we're calling week two global power rankings. It's week two if you're going just off the LCS, but every other league's in their own kind of world for how things are going. But we're going back to the 20 to 1 format. No tier lists this time. We're going team to team to team to team, 20 to 1. And truthfully, Mark, it was tough to even come up with 20 teams that deserve to be on this list. The first few, you're you're really digging deep at the bottom of this barrel to find anything. You're, you're scraping through every of the playoff teams for all the regions and kind of having that second evaluation of, well, number one, we need to include almost all of you. And then two, it's, well, who are the pretenders and who is for real at that situation? And that's where you start to get some of these issues when you're trying to list them out. But here we are, week two, a couple more games around the globe. Absolutely time to start listing them out 20 through one for the global power rankings. And it's still early season, early days in a lot of these leagues uh, for the summer split. But bottom of the barrel, no one embodies that more than LNG, who, yes, had a game three win against OMG, maybe looked a little bit better, okay, but this is still very much a team that looks like pretenders. But again, really that whole bottom half of the LPL has been underwhelming in this first round robin of action. And that has been a large contributor to this top 20 having not exactly the same punch as top 20s as we've had at various other points in the last uh, year or two, I'll say. For sure, when you're looking at where the power is, how you're feeling about it, LNG at number 20 and the struggles that they have gone through, there has been a minor resurgence, I think is the cautious way to put it for them in the last uh, you know week and a half of it, a bit. But absolutely, when you're talking about this LNG team, their record, how things have gone in this LPL split at number 20, that should be an indication to everybody there's a little bit of some murky water as you enter into these territories. Especially when you have four LCS teams on this list. Again, this is due to the bottom half of the LPL not looking good. But FlyQuest, even though uh, they haven't played that many games, nobody in the LCS has PSG talent ahead of them. They've only played three games or three series. But, you know, this is obviously an MSI shout out. You can't be putting PSG below FlyQuest. You can't. You can't. Even if we're having FlyQuest here in this situation where we know there's still going to be some growing pains for this roster that they've gone with for the summer split and how they're going to have to adapt with the young players of quad. And then even really just going down to the bottom lane and talking about that lane, the duo specifically, uh, Masu and Busio having to improve, having to be better, having to be more reliable for this FlyQuest team if we're really going to consider them beyond talking about Bwipo, beyond talking about Inspired and what they've been able to do in the jungle for that team. That's going to be an important factor. But when you talk about that one, you have to throw in PSG, as you mentioned, because they've looked just as strong to start out their summer split, and they do carry over the victory at MSI that they had against FlyQuest. And that was such a dominant victory that you are better bet your bottom dollar that we're slapping them in on top of FlyQuest in the power rankings. And remember, they forced a fifth game against BLG at MSI, competitive series out of them. They got a big showdown this weekend against Flying Oyster, who was the other 3-0 squad in the PCS to kick things off. So if they're winning that, they're probably staying strong in this top 20 list. Uh, Dignitas. One and one squad, just like FlyQuest, but they played a very close series against a higher ranked Cloud9 now, and then the 2 0 against 100 Thieves, who are a pretty decent squad. We're feeling good about the Dignitas Summer. Oh man, I'm feeling even, even better than good for the Dignitas Summer. I'm ready to go all in on this team, and that's not just based off of what I've seen on the Rift, it's about the off the Rift stuff, it's about the interviews, it's about the environment. That is clearly shown with these players returning to the LCS, joining in this team all together with Dignitas trying this revenge tour, so to speak, to remind people, remind these teams what talent they have. You're seeing it. And I think the biggest thing is absolutely that this team has the mojo together. They're all having good vibes. Everyone's vibing. There will be a bad time. You got to remember that it's going to happen over the course of these times and how you handle that adversity together is going to be important. But right now, vibes are good. And that was one of the question marks we had coming towards this Dignitas team, bringing back these players, the veterans, not at any 
real questions about uh, whether they're going to be, you know, a good teammates or anything like that. But would this project all work together? Right now, early indication, double thumbs up from me about Dignitas. Especially the vibes must be going pretty well when you hear about their scrim record and the whole team's kind of laughing <laughs> about it. Like, yeah, but we'll be fine on stage. So, I mean, it's slightly concerning if you continue to lose like 80% of your scrims as the season goes on. But so far, <laughs> things feeling pretty good for Dignitas. Things are feeling better for the ninjas in pajamas who have now clinched that winner's group, Group A, as we're heading into that next round at 4-3. and three. Still obviously a very sus squad and not ready to say you're confident in them by any means. Right. Now, you're not ready to say that you're confident in them, but at the very least, they deserve the respect of taking one of these spots in the top 20 power rankings at this point. As you mentioned, locking down that second spot out to make sure that you're going to be in that upper bracket situation as we move to the next stage of this LPL split. That's where it all comes down to it for the ninjas in pajamas, because absolutely you can talk about them and all the positives that they did to earn that spot. And those are all valid. Those get you the check marks that puts you on a list like this. But how do you stay on a list like this? How do you climb up a list like this? when your territory is going to be in that upper bracket, well, it's proven that you're for real, that you're not the frauds in any situation whatsoever. And we can only wait for Ninjas in Pajamas to have that opportunity in the upper bracket of the LPL. And they feel like kind of the bubble team between that, the good of the LPL and the bad of it. It's can you beat NIP? That's how we gauge whether you're a legit squad in the LPL or not. Then we get a trio of Western squads, SK and BDS, both sitting at 6-1, and one, Cloud9 sandwiched in between. I think these three are all a very similar power level if you were going to slot them in a best of five international event. Could definitely go either way. Obviously, this new look Thanatos Cloud9, we've only got five games to judge and base them off of. But even though they have the same record, I would value BDS a little bit higher than SK and Cloud9 fits nicely in between. Yeah, I think I really like that this is the the trio, the Neapolitan sandwich that we're throwing in at this point of the power rankings because when you're looking at a team like SK, they've done enough things to get this type of spot in the power rankings. They haven't faltered yet really outside of that Fnatic matchup for them. They've been this strong team, squad, strong squad to start out this split for the LEC. You throw in Cloud9 on top of that, the way that they've looked in the LCS, best of threes rolling on through and knowing the power that they're going to carry into those series. We're starting to see that. We've seen Thanatos as well, as you mentioned, Reaper behind the scenes, keeping track of things. Absolutely believe in this Cloud9 team continuing their trend upwards in the LCS, but it wasn't perfect. And to be perfect was going to be the requirement to keep moving up even further up this list so soon for Cloud9. They find themselves in this position where BDS is on top of them. And I think that is a combination of where BDS's power is to start this summer split for the LC LEC, excuse me, as well as that continued success and uh, placement that they have been, where you can have that confidence to throw them on top of where Cloud9 still is operating at right now. And really, for Cloud9 to be higher, we need to see them against not Immortals. You know, more higher tier, as high tier as the LCS level of competition uh, can get you to. You know, they gotta play Team Liquid, gotta play FlyQuest to really see what the power level of this squad is. Uh, last two on here, anyone's legend or anyone, anything but a fraud. Seven and one, latest against Weibo Gaming. They forced Crisp out of the starting lineup and showed that they are leaps and bounds ahead of the fraudulent Weibo squad way ahead of the fraudulent Weibo camping right now. I mean, it's insane to think about how bad things have gotten, how fraudulent it is for Weibo. And on the other end of things, here we are with anyone's legend. One of the teams that was slapped on was in the consideration for that fraud label and has done everything to prove that they are not the fraud so far throughout this early part of the fearless draft in the LPL. You're looking at a squad that right now, love it. 92, 93% win rate closing out with that gold advantage at 15 minutes and yes that gold advantage of 15 minutes they're hitting that gold advantage a lot of times before that 15 minutes that's the type of early play that we have been seeing from this anyone's legend squad last one on this list is g2 esports uh 
not quite in the top 10. Listen, they had one really solid week where they looked like G2, but they've had about two weeks or minimum a week and a half where they looked like a meddling middle of the pack LEC squad. So fully expect them to climb back into the top 10 as playoffs start to roll around in the LEC. Hey, he's got to have the bigger runway room for a jet like G2 at this point because yeah, it's impossible. You can't get that takeoff with just one good week. You need that second week of tarmac down on the runway to make sure that you got the room, pick up that momentum, get yourself in the air. G2's got that speed though, right now. The way that they have climbed back, they have shaken off the MSI hangover. They are awake, they are roaring and ready to go in, in the LEC. The way that they performed last week, picking up those wins, getting that momentum, getting that type of confidence back, that's what you want to see from G2. I know when we move on to the top 10 on this list, you're going to be upset seeing G2 at 11, and you got the Kwang Dong Freaks in that 10 spot. But listen, you look at the body of work for summer, and so far, Kwang Dong's looked better than G2. By the end of summer, do I think Kwang Dong's still going to be ahead of G2? No, absolutely not. They're going to climb over them. But right now, KDF's lone loss is to T1, and that's a series where they had a dominant Game 1 win against the defending world champs. Put some respect on Kwang Dong. You're getting to the end of the horse race here type of situation. Kwang Dong freaks the long shot is ahead of your favorite G2 that you're expecting to come through. The question is, is there enough in the tank in these next couple of weeks to get to that finish line, to finish ahead of G2? That's the real question when you're looking at the Kwang Dong freaks because right now what they've got in front of them, or sorry, excuse me, what they put behind them already is a good record in the uh, LCK. What they have done, the strength of opponents, They've had to go through and stay at this point. This is a good sign for the Kwang Dong Freaks. They need to hold out strong and continue those performances throughout the split when they get these rematches against those top teams. That's going to be the question because they got to beat up on your bottom feeders and you're going to be right back up against these playoff caliber teams in the LCK and how you cut your teeth against them because that G2 behind you is going to pick up steam, is going to pick up those wins in the LEC now that they're back on track, now that they're out of this hangover fog type of thing from MSI, you got to keep pace with that. This week, you're ahead of it. Next week, that's the big question for me when you're looking at the Kwang Dong Freaks. Got a big showdown with D-plus over the weekend for them to really see what their power level is at. Then, much like MSI, PSG, FlyQuest, you got to have Team Liquid ahead of Fnatic. I know Fnatic has the blemish against G2, but have still consistently looked like the best team in this first round of round robin uh, in the LEC. And then Team Liquid have had probably the most dominant win so far in the entire LCS carrying that MSI moment. I don't even think there's a hypothetical world that you could make up where Team Liquid has a better start to the summer split. Maybe just okay there's a uh, a plane makes a mistake and drops cash from the sky over the top of the lcs arena when it's a team liquid game that's the only way it's a better start to the summer split for this team liquid team the way that they have looked all things for this team i think we can talk about of course the young core in apa yawn that's the big one that you always want to check in with what even the veterans right it's important to check in with them impact core jj they have been fantastic core jj's been one of these guys where of course we hold to such a high standard but in reality over the last year and a half it has been up and down over the points of time for him he's at a good point right now with team liquid and then in the jungle our man the general umpty is getting the job done is facilitating very well for these lanes for the team team liquid holding out strong and you're right claiming that spot above fanatic that old msi rolling on through and listen Jan has said general umpty is He's actually the funny vibes. He's, he's a little less serious than what the rest of the Team Liquid boys are. So Umpty fitting in seamlessly into that LCS, pick, picking up a title in his very first split. Then a pair of LCK teams to wrap up this board. I know D-plus technically has a better record. Did beat Hanwha in the head-to-head. -head, but since that series, which was the first series of the split, Hanwha has definitely leveled up. And lately... I know they just got 2 0 would by Gen G, but anyone who can take Gen G past 40 minutes and actually go toe to toe with them in a lot of these fights, you gotta give them that credit. Which, spoiler alert, 
that says a heck of a lot about Gen G and where they are continuing to climb up and continuing to raise the heights of League of Legends. We're not talking about Gen G just yet. We are talking about Hanwha Life and D+. And Hanwha Life getting the edge in this situation right now because yes, as you lay down, you look at the records, you look at the head-to-head, it does own to D+. And just like we've talked about with these MSI ones, that does buy you something but not enough in this situation, given the way that we have seen Hanwha Life play against what is that next tier, that ultra tier of gaming uh, Gen G has been able to find. Hanwha Life able to provide that challenge, able to provide that grit, that sandpaper to it, just not enough to find an edge for your own victory in the series. That's the next step for them. And Viper was absolutely trying his damnedest. His first death on the Zarya this set comes as Genji is beating down the Nexus turrets. And there, there's no worse feeling as an ADC than having a game like that, where you know you're on, you're getting something for your team, you're doing good stuff, and the one time you make a mistake, the one time the enemy team gets the better of you, that's the time the Nexus is blowing up for your squad. It feels bad. Now we get into that top five, which is a very familiar top five a lot of the spring split was spent talking about these five squads in here and here they are yet again how about a combined one series loss between all five of these teams and it's at the hands of gen g that t1 got that one loss other than that they're all undefeated we referred to this top five as the ultra exclusive vip zone of the the top 20 club that you're entering into type of thing this top five, nobody's bringing business cards anymore. Nobody's exchanging. Everybody knows that's the regulars. How you doing, Tony? They just Tony's scan their later. retinas. And, uh, yeah, Kanavi, Mr. Kanavi, come right in. Oh, confirmed. Yes. Confirmed the top five, the VIP room. It is the same. There's been no reason to change it because these have been those top dogs. They have been the forerunners of their regions and they have proven it every step of the way. As you laid out, that's impressive stat of, of that one series loss. And that series loss is T1 to Gen G sitting on that throne. It's important to talk about in this top five that, yes, there is a throne. There is a king of the top five. There is a clear cut, number one. And that is going to be Gen G when you do look at the number one. But, but five through one, these still are the elites of the elites hanging around right now in League of Legends. And, you know, now this post-MSI ranking, top esports, we felt a little rough after they get 3-0'd by G2, but they've still looked more dominant in their wins than JDG. So even though they have, well, now TES has played one more set, so has one more win, but been a bit more dominant, deserved that spot ahead of them. T1's demise a little bit over-exaggerated after losing to Gen G. Just, just a bit, just a bit. It's that middle zone that's so hard, and especially when it is such a fandom that is so, you know, uh, vor voracious the way that the T1 fandom is for anything and for that positivity and, and success. You look at the results, you look at what you get on stage, and you need to have that evaluation of, yes, this isn't reaching the highs. It's not the dominant force that was the world championship run that they went through and buzzsawed through the LPL all the way through to your championship. That's not the level of form that you're gonna get from the T1 at this point. I don't think you can count on getting to that point. The way things have gone, all the external factors towards that this year for T1. But that doesn't mean that this is a bad team by any stretch of the imagination or players that can't pop off and make special things happen. And that's what you see this past week with T1 absolutely finding that form. and. Uh, a little bit of moment to, to flex that muscle and show that maybe we're not operating at the same horsepower as a Gen G on the throne, but we are certainly a top speed squad. And owner has maybe been more consistent than the world championship run. And let's not forget, they didn't level up to that world's form until pretty far into summer. It felt like they weren't there at spring. They got destroyed at MSI by the second seed from the LPL. So it was very late in the season that they hit that form. Still a chance for that, but the DDoSing needs to stop for them to really have a chance of reaching that level. But uh, they're still behind a squad like BLG, who obviously you're carrying over a bit of that MSI run to finals, and they haven't really slowed down whatsoever here in the LPL. But it's just another series for Gen G against the co main contender in Hanwha Life, where they not only win, 
They win in 2-0 fashion. Not only are they 5-0 in series so far, they haven't dropped a game. It's been all 2-0s, and it feels like they're again on the path to another record-setting split. It's, it's nuts because we knew how good things were going for Gen G earlier on in the spring and talking about their power and where they're doing, what they're accomplishing, what, what can happen. And then it got kind of, you know, lukewarm. It got a little bit cool on Gen G, despite the success still being there. The performance, as far as evaluating and where you felt that lethality on the team was, wasn't the same. Post MSI, it's an extremely different story because everything is online. It is a full green board of lights here for a Gen G that we are seeing in the system command. It is good news because you've got the top lane in fine form. Not that it was in any bad form last split, but Kane has got a very comfortable pool of champions right now that are in that forefront of the meta and are a major disruption and are extremely reliable for a team like Gen G to throw him on to. Canyon, of course, is in this mode where he is so good, so talented. He's playing whatever he wants in the jungle. He has bucked the meta completely and is going full hog wild in the jungle for Gen G. Chovy, business as usual, steady, continuing to build up his advantages, continuing to dumpster anybody he goes up against. Dropping and then Lucian that mid now to break up the Sadie Carey meta. Uh, 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 yeah, you thought the Corky was all he was going to play all split? My man's got a couple of other interesting plans for us with that Lucian mid. And then it's that bottom lane duo. Our psycho dogs down under. It's your boy Pays getting on page with Lehens and how they've been able to pop off. This is a Gen G team that is no question in my mind deserving of the number one spot on the throne. Yeah, the weak spot in spring pays in the hands. We've talked so much about them leveling up at MSI, but now we've seen them hold their own, sometimes outshine the premier bot lanes, Guma and Viper now in basically back-to-back -back series. So absolutely no question marks around that bot lane right now. The only question mark for Gen G is when they're going to drop a game and why will it probably be a winless KT rolster whenever they match up against them again. <laughs> it's inevitable. But they're at the top right now. That's it for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beauties. Thanks for hanging out. We'll catch you on that flippity flip.